All right, in the Module 2 uh, Take Home Project, uh, what we're asking you to do is calculate some holding period return metrics and then opine on the differences. I have four company or four stock symbols showing here. SPY is the stock symbol for a, an exchange traded fund, which is similar to a mutual fund except that the shares trade like shares of stock. With most mutual funds you trade your money back and forth with the mutual fund itself but you can't sell your mutual fund shares to other investors. If you want to be able to trade in the secondary markets though you can simply buy exchange traded funds and that's got to be a huge market over the last 20 years as people instead of trying to pick stocks they try and pick market sectors. Anyway, SPY is the uh, entire stock market, if you will. The other three stocks that we're going to be looking at are Apple, stock symbol AAPL, Amazon, stock symbol AMZN, Microsoft, stock symbol MSFT. Now, I already went and pulled the data on prices, and I got it from Yahoo Finance. If you go to Yahoo Finance, finance.yahoo.com unfortunately they have a lot of pop-ups so this makes it go kind of slow but that's how they pay for giving you free information out here uh, there is something called the quote lookup that's right over here you can look up stock symbols and I'll look up AAPL that's the Apple stock symbol you can also Go searching for the company name and it'll find the stock symbol for you. If I click on the search button, and it's giving me some options, but it's slower than I'll get out. This is Apple. You can see the market just closed about a, a few seconds ago. If you look up here, you can see the last price for Apple, I don't know what it just did. All right, but so you can get real, basically real-time stock prices from uh, Apple. But what we're looking for is historical data. So historical data is basically the share prices. If I pull this up, I can actually the default is daily prices over the last year. I want to go five years. I want to show historical prices and I want monthly prices. And it'll give me the monthly average price for uh, Apple in all the months going back to whenever. And it goes in reverse order. Okay, so let's jump in here to where it says October 31st, 2019. The open price is the price the shares opened at at the beginning of the month. The high during the month was $268. The low during the month was 249. The close was 267.25. The adjusted close is different because you see these dividends up here. If the stock pays a dividend, uh, when they pay the dividend, the share price drops. Now we'll cover more of that when we get more in specifics in stock, but they pay a quarterly dividend of 77 cents. The prior year it was 73 cents, the prior year it was 63 cents. So the adjusted close number in Yahoo uh, reflects the the uh, reflects the share price adjusted for the dividend. So basically they fold the dividend back into the calculation. So you're getting the average of the dividend plus the share price itself. Those are the numbers I pulled out, and I already just pulled those and put them into the spreadsheet for you for these companies. I also calculated the monthly return. To calculate a monthly return for SPY over during January, I take January divided by the prior month of December 2016, subtract 1. Once I have that done once, I can copy it down here and it'll, it'll, and, and it'll do it really quickly. I noticed in some of the stuff I saw on uh, your first project, I saw some people doing things manually. Learn some Excel. It'll save you a lot of time in the long run. 
All right, so I get you to this point. What I want you to do is go over here in these yellow boxes. I've already computed these things for SPY, but I'm going to go ahead and show you how I would do it if I was doing it for these other companies. These will be check numbers for you to use. Okay, so the first is the holding period return for 2017. Go over to December 2017. Divide it by December 2016, subtract 1. That's the percentage change over the year, okay? 19.95%. To get it for 2018, the number at the end of 2018, that's the December 2018 number, divided by the two, December 2017 number, minus 1. And to get the third holding period, if I take... December 2019 divided by December 2018, subtract 1, I get the third holding period return. Okay, to get the three-year holding period return, I just used the formula I've given you right here. That's equals 1 plus the 2017 times open parents 1 plus the 2018 plus, or times rather, 1 plus the 2019, okay? And then minus 1. So it's a 42% return over the three-year period. The average equals average. I want to take the average for the three years. And the average is 12.68. To calculate the geometric mean as opposed to the arithmetic mean, now this is the arithmetic mean annual, the arithmetic mean annual number. Let me move this stuff over so you can see a little bit better. Unfortunately, my doceri is acting up. All right, so to get the geometric mean, take. 1 plus the three-year holding period return, that's that 42.52, raise it to the open parents 1-3, and then subtract 1. So the arithmetic mean is 12.68, the geometric mean 12.54, those are pretty close. Calculate the average monthly return, and that would be average for all the ones in the SPY column. So I'm taking the average monthly return, multiply that by 12, do that again, take that number times 12, and that'll just convert it to an annual number. It is similar to the three-year average, but it's different. Okay, similar but different. This number this number and this number are all three different measures of the annual return. And they're all correct, but they're all slightly different. To get the standard deviation, the formula is equal STD EV, open parentheses, and cover up the same percentage returns. And what I get is 4.02%. To annualize that, take the monthly standard deviation and multiply it by square root of 12. Now, remember we did, we multiplied the monthly average return by 12 to get it to an annual number. You multiply the standard deviation by the square root of 12 to annualize it. All right, and then we want to do the coefficient of variation, the annual standard deviation divided by the annual monthly return. Okay, so you get about 1.09 and that's the risk per unit of return. Now, by the way, it, you'll be getting all these numbers here, but I won't have the formula, but you'll have a check number. Once you do this for one column, just copy it over to the others because of the way spreadsheets set up. And what you'll find is that these individual companies have much higher returns, okay? Part of that's luck, 
but part of it is that each of these individual companies is much riskier. If you look at this, the, the, the standard deviation of the monthly returns, you see it's much higher for these two, and it's higher for Microsoft, but Microsoft's is not as bad. You also see that the average return is similar, but the risk is very dissimilar. The reason that the risk is so low relative to the others for the S&P 500 metric here for SPY is diversification. When one of the stocks is going up, the other's going down, they tend to cancel each other out. So using an index like SPY for your investing gives you typically a lower return, but it's, you have less extreme values in there. And while all three of these companies made money, I note that Apple has a negative return for 2018. So you're get negative returns in the S&P 500. The highs aren't as high, the lows aren't as low. That's the difference. All right, so your job will be to fill in the yellow boxes with the correct numbers. Uh, you can always go back to the video here and see if your numbers look like my numbers because... That would probably be a pretty good hint that if you calculated the same numbers, your answer must be pretty close to mine. And then what I want you to do is evaluate this in terms of the discussion in the chapters 3 and 4 about the holding period returns, the geometric means, the risk and the return and the coefficient of variation for these three stocks relative to the S&P 500.